Well, our next session is being led by Christopher Watkin. He has got over 20 years experience of property surveying and banking. And now he specializes in business generation in the lettings market. So Chris is joined by a panel of industry experts, and they're going to look at how exceptional customer service can gain you more instruction. So let me now hand over to Chris. Uh, the state agency in 2021 has been an exceptional year, but at the end of the day, listings and people putting their houses on the market is steadily drying up. We have the cream of the cream here today to talk about three ways that you can get more listings, attract more people to your agency. And we've got three agents and two gurus. So we've got Stephen Brown at the start, and he, he's very well known in the industry. We have Angela Todd, who is a, a RAN member from the Northeast. Mike Nettleton, who is the boss man of Knock Dighton, and he runs a seven branch network in Shropshire. We have Charlotte, Charlotte Jeffrey Campbell, and she is a, another estate agency trainer guru. And we've got Guy Devere, who is uh, also uh, a, an agent in RAN in Hastings. So thank you very much, everyone. Give everyone all a round of applause for, for being here. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So uh, we're going to spend the next 29 minutes looking at customer service, business generation and marketing to get you more listings. So let's start off with customer service. Charlotte, what does good customer service look like in a state agency? I think the thing I've noticed listening to the talks today is that actually what we have to offer is time with our customers because what they want is our knowledge and our expertise because so much of what we do can be done automated, can be done by tech when you actually come to the point where you want to talk about your needs as a homeowner or a buyer or a seller, we should be demonstrating our role as proper experts in, in property. And if we demonstrate our role as an expert, then our fee levels are much more um, attainable and, we've, and we build better long-term relationships with clients. So I think for me, customer service is about making sure that your team are, are experts in what they talk about. Okay, so let's be honest. Uh, leads have been, when I'm talking about uh, leads and talking about demand leads which is obviously tenant leads and buyer leads they've been to a penny but you talk to an awful lot of estate agents and they they can't even field them uh, michael what are your thoughts on that yeah i think um going back to kind of charlotte's points in terms of where you can go in terms of automation and there's a deluge of there's plenty of data in your database it's just being able to get at it and being able to process it um, and i think in order to be able to deliver like an exceptional customer service you've got to automate the stuff so you can focus on you know, the real soft people skills. And, and Charlotte's also mentioned as well in terms of fee level, which is slightly obvious, but if you're setting the bar at a level as far as what your customer service is going to be, uh, the fee levels have got to be sustainable in order to be able to deliver that. Angela, how have you coped with customer service with a deluge of people wanting to buy houses? Just going back to basics and making sure that we give the time. Um, and as Charlotte says, demonstrate the, the knowledge that, and the expertise that we have. Do you think estate agency bosses are very good at sitting in their ivory towers and not actually getting their hands mucky, sorry, um, <laughs> and, and, and getting their hands mucky with the guys on the front line? Guy? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think um, it's important to be at the coalface because you'll get constant feedback about what you need to be doing, and if you're not doing it, people will tell you. Okay. Uh, Charlotte, you're a trainer, and again, we'll come to you in a second, Stephen, as well, is why do bosses send uh, their, their negs and valuers on customer service training, or any training, but don't send themselves? Well, I don't know whether it's always like that. Sometimes I see the bosses being invited to events like this, and they have the opportunity to see the speakers, and they get involved in, in networking, and then it's fed back into the teams in the offices. So you have this Chinese whisper effect where the boss comes away with some brilliant ideas, but it's really hard then to implement. And I suppose my role as a trainer and, and, and with Able Agent that we work with is training needs to be accessible because if it isn't accessible, it just comes to a full stop. And I think the historical route of going for a full day's training and being bombarded with information as you, for your individual staff members, bosses don't feel that they get the reward out of that. But the bosses need to take ownership of the plan. What do they want to get out of the training? And what are they going to get? What, what, what customer service improvements do they want? Because if you've got a clear goal, it's much easier to measure. If you haven't got a clear goal, you can't measure your outcomes. And I think that's where you have to come from. Stephen, do you think 
estate agents train their staff enough? Of course, I mean, let's be frank. Okay, let's be honest. You're a trainer. That's an easy but again, question. Okay, here's the thought, here's the thought boys and girls. There are 15,000 individual one-man, one-woman band estate agents, but I dare you to name more than 10 trainers in the UK, estate agency trainers. You think about that. Mm. 10 trainers between 15,000 of you. Mm. Okay? Stephen. Okay, so are you a know-it-all estate agency or are you a learn-it-all <laughs> learn estate agency? And there's so much fantastic information out there that actually, if you really want it, it's free. You know, you can go onto mm. YouTube. There's some great podcasts out there. It's all about taking action and implementing it. So the best agents are the ones that go to the courses, listen to the podcasts, watch the YouTube videos, and take action. And just coming back to your original question about um, customer experience and make it exceptional, I would say take all the touch points in the various journey. If you're a vendor, if you're a seller, you're a landlord, you're a tenant, you're a buyer, and go through every touch point and ask, what am I doing to be exceptional? Okay. What am I doing to add value? What am I doing to be different? Because it is a very competitive market out there. There's loads of agents you're competing against. Okay. So you have to be different. Why is it that some agents can charge and get 2% and others charge 0.85%? Why? One, because they're exceptional negotiators because they've been out there, they've had exceptional training, and they go out and they implement it. Okay, so it's, personally, I think training, everybody should be go on training, but it doesn't have to be to one of my courses or Charlotte's courses or Tony Morris's courses. Train yourself, there's so much free stuff out there. What's, Help yourself. What, so the, one, the training that you used to do at Countrywide before you got sacked in 2008 <laughs> won't do then? Countrywide, who are they? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bless them. Um, talking about fees, uh, it's interesting that Peter Knight with the Home, Move, Home Movers survey and also Brian Ackerboom also produced his own survey, that the, why is it that some agents can charge 2% and, the, and the, some people can only get 0.85? Okay, so, so let's have some fun here. Can I have a volunteer who recently bought their home? Anybody recently bought a property? Come on. Okay, here we go, Angela. Okay, so let me, let me ask you a question. When you bought, did you buy it through an agent? Yeah. Okay, was it your own agency? Yeah. Yes. You're no good, I'm not going to use you. <laughs> you most probably wanted to negotiate downwards. Anybody that. else who recently bought property? Come on, okay. let's have some breaks. So, Heather, okay, just about see you there. Okay, so um, you recently bought a property. Can I ask you, would you have paid more money for it? Yeah, probably would, yeah. Okay, can I ask you how much more you would have paid? Maybe 10, Sorry? you would have paid an extra £15,000 more. Yeah. Really? Would you have paid 15500 Maybe, yeah. Six. No, but you definitely would have paid fifteen. So okay. let, me, let me ask you a question, Heather. Yeah. Who would you prefer to sell your biggest tax-free asset? Me, who's demonstrated in 20 seconds that I would have got an extra £15,000 from the buyer. Or the agent that cost your seller £15,000? You, Stephen. Great. The investment in my services is 2.5% plus that, and I'm still the cheapest agent. Where can okay. I sign? Thank you. So, <laughs> my you point, so my point is, how good are you at demonstrating your negotiating skills? You know, as a seller, I want somebody to put more money in my pocket. Okay? I'm not interested in a cheap fee. I want more money. Are you demonstrating how good you are at putting more money in that vendor's pocket? That was just one way of demonstrating it. Thank you, Stephen. There you go. That's a good takeaway for you. Charlotte? So my other thought as well is how much do your team share your vision? Because you might say, I know my boss used to say to me when I was a, a negotiator or a lister, we, we, we've got to get 2% or we've got to get 1.5%. But he never really sat me down and explained why we were worth one and a half or two percent. So I think one of the really important things is if you're thinking about your fee levels for 2022 is what do you need to do to help your team understand why you're worth that fee? Because unless you get the team along with you understanding why your fee levels should be higher, 
and what's different about you because I do think one of the things that we need to do better is our, demonstrate our differences and our differentiation as agents. So if we can demonstrate that perhaps in property management we do our routine inspections every three months whereas our competitors are every six months or we have um, an in-house handyman who solves problems quickly compared to an answer phone message talking about repairs then it's very easy for our team to feel confident. And one of the questions I'd ask your team is, what fee do you think we're worth? And get the team as a, te as a group to decide what they think their fees are worth. And if everyone's on board, then you're going to see those fee levels and confidence rise. Stephen? Uh, just uh, piggyback on what you said. Mm. You're spot on. If you ask the public, our customers, what we think we do, they just think all you do is put a property on right move on the portal, and that's it you actually sit down with your team and work it out, there are at least 50 things you do from when you take a property on from instruction. I'm very happy to give anybody here that for nothing, okay? The 50 things that you do. So please find me on the Agents Together stand and I'll give that away to you um, another day. Excellent, good stuff. Right, so that's customer service and I think the great takeaways there are is that we need to train our staff we need to work out what our culture is and actually prove that the, if the staff don't believe we're worth 2%, how the hell are we going to prove it? Um, and again, just believe in yourself and believe in your product. And again, take away that negotiating technique that Stephen did. Okay, now let's move on and talk about business generation because this, this is all about getting more business. Um, Stephen, what would your top tips be for business generation for sales? Okay, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you I'm not picking on you. So you recently bought a property, been in it nine months, market's been very strong, prices have gone out, okay? Have you thought about taking some money out and buying a buy-to-let property? I have, I've just done it. You've just done it, okay. So that one question I want to ask you all is how many of you are doing equity checks on every single vendor, on every single landlord? That one question gives you 13 um, revenue streams. Okay, so financial service lead, two conveyancing leads, as we're at the RAN conference, a RAN, conf a RAN lead as well. Okay, we've got surveyor's fees, we've got removals, okay, we have got a potential project management, we've got fully managed, we've got rent guarantee, we've got tenants insurance, we've got landlords insurance, okay, we've got utilities. So one question can open up the door to give you 13 revenue streams. The gold, and I know um, you were talking about AI, and you mentioned telephones, okay? The gold is sat in your data bank every day. If you call your data bank every day and you can get one extra market appraisal a day, that's 250 a year. If you can convert one in two, that's 125. If you sell 100 and the average UK fee is 3,000 pounds, that's an extra 300,000 pounds of revenue. Okay, so many agents are chasing the next thing. Okay, if I, can I just do a little exercise on you? Okay, can you stand up for me if you own a property, please? Come on, boys. Very quickly. Guys. Stand up. Stand up if you own a property. Okay, thank you. Can you stay standing if you have heard from your estate agent since you bought the property? <laughs> wow. Okay, there you go. Look how many of you have gone into witness protection. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to ask any of you what you've done because this is being filmed. But that is scary, really, really scary. Okay, so you are missing an opportunity. Here's one thing I've learnt with um, lockdown. One really easy question to ask is, how's your living space? Okay, now the answer will come back. It's too small, too large. I need a bigger garden, and I hate my partner. <laughs> okay? It's an opportunity to get, to get people moving. So just ask disruptive questions. The more disruptive questions, it will help you. But please don't let people who have bought from you go into witness protection. Have a proper stay in touch policy. Okay? Call them annually. Book in an annual health check. So every year you are going back. Okay? Give them market <laughs> updates. If a property comes on in their road, tell them that a property's come on the road. If it sells in their street, tell them what sells in the street. It's, you've got everything in front of you. I mean, this is an interesting fact that out of all the properties that have sold since lockdown, uh, um, 
over ha uh, half of them have been in their property less than six years and 18 weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so every single, in, in your town, half of the properties that have sold in your town since lockdown have, have been in the property six years and 18 weeks or less. Yet only one in eight buyers go back to the estate agent they bought their house off. All of you are running around like blue ass Watts names trying to find new people when why don't you actually get your negs to ring up the database and talk to these people and actually say, do you want to know what's happening in your street? Do you want to know equity release like what Stephen has said? So Angela, why are estate agents so bad at ringing their database? I think because we, estate agents, get caught up on the nonsense of the business, mm -hmm. dotting the I's, crossing the T's, making sure everything's just right, that they forget the importance. And that's what we've concentrated on a lot, certainly this last couple of months, is prospecting. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of tools that we've introduced into the business that has helped us massively. Name those names. So we embarked, just before lockdown, we, um, we signed up with Akaboom. And that's a brilliant tool that allows us to send um, purpose-built reports, both pre and post valuation. But it then puts our customers into that database. So every week, two weeks, however okay. you know we choose, they can literally get a market report given comparables of yep, their properties. Yeah, got those wonderful spriff reports, guys. Send those spriff yep. reports. They're absolutely. Don't use them just on your vows. Send them out to, to properties that have been in the years. Yep every year Stephen can we do another another little exercise Go just on, then. on what Angela said so um if you agree with this statement please can you stand up market appraisals are the lifeblood of any estate agents and if you don't have market appraisals really you're stuffed so if you agree with that statement please stand up okay right I'm honestly surprised that you're not all standing up but that's fine okay so sit down so um can you stand up if that's the case and I agree. Can you stand up if your office does one hour consistently every single day creating opportunities, or as Angela called it, prospecting? I prefer creating opportunities. Stand up if you're doing one hour every single day of creating opportunities. Interestingly, the only two people stood up are, the, are Ross at the back, who actually, you can actually outsource your business generation to him, but of course he would do that, wouldn't he? <laughs> He's had good training, what can I say? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Now that's scary, okay? There's about 10 people standing up in this room, okay? The biggest thing we all need is market appraisals and instructions, is that fair? Okay, so why is it not scheduled in everybody's diary to do it every single day because it is the most important thing for you to grow your business? Is it something to do with the fact, Charlotte, that most valuers are a particular profile type and they hate the rejection, so they... Yeah, it could be. I, but I sometimes think it, it's, it's the bosses. I think you need to plan it in and you need to monitor it and you need to give reward when it's done well because part of it is it's soul-destroying, isn't it? You know, you spend hours on the phone, you're trying to ring people or email them or text or whatever, and if you don't have a result, it can be... You know, it can be disheartening. It's, it's hard work, isn't it? Yeah. This business generally, isn't it? it is very, very hard work, yeah, yeah. Do you enjoy it? I do, yeah. I think there's different ways in which you can generate business as well. Okay, because... so what do you do to generate business then? Well, I, I, having done this job for a long time, I started to get bored of my own pitch in the house. Okay. Um, so I started to watch YouTube videos about estate agents doing video. Um, so I thought, okay, I can see the benefits of that. So I started to do a uh, video and I thought to myself, most people are going to look at Rightmove, most people are going to look at social media. If you're doing video, you're going to be on both those platforms. And obviously going into and out of lockdown, virtual tours were very, very important, but actually scripted, presented videos in front of camera where you're doing something a bit different and people can watch you, get to know, like and trust you over a period of time. I've done it for about two years, I've done about 100 videos now. So if I go out and value someone's house, I can pick a video that's like theirs and either send that to them before or after the valuation and say, I can do this for you. It's a point of difference. And all of that is plastered all over the portals and social media, and it does work. Angela, what do you do with, I know you're big on videos, but you actually go and interview people in South Shields. What the hell is interviewing Bob's coffee shop got to do with trying to get a free valuation? <laughs> Building your contacts. Um, I tend to use and go and interview quite a lot of 
prestigious businesses within South Tyneside and certainly those that have got massive following over social media because South Tyneside, for instance, we've got um, Sandanza Clothing Company and they've got 3,000 plus followers. Mm. I interview Andrew and get our brand under his. Mm -hmm. So, so it, you're piggybacking it's... on someone else's local firm who's got a, with a big following. Yeah. But are you talking about yourself and how wonderful your estate agency no, is? No, don't mention it. Hold on a second. <laughs> Surely you've got to talk about how awesome you are and how big your market share is? No. I mean, Michael, you, you know, <laughs> if you don't mind me saying, with your agency, you actually, Dawn actually goes and stands outside competitors' properties and tells people that they should buy that property because it's the best buy-to-let deal. Yeah. What the hell are you... Honestly, he stands outside, his staff <laughs> and colleagues stand outside competitors' houses and tell people to buy the house off the competitor because it's the best buy to let deal in Telford. Correct. What planet are you on? Well, we're in the best industry in the world. We've got fantastic content. We've got local houses, we've taken the photographs, so we've got a video tour, we've put a price on it, we've written up about it, and then the first thing we do is export all that content to you know, <laughs> someone else who will remain nameless. But um, <laughs> bring, bring it in house, people love it. And you know, something kind of with my joint hats on in terms of both kind of supplier and agent, um, roughly about 10% of all our sales applicants self-identify as landlords. Mm. So, okay, fine, as far as buying your own home, that's as and when you know, life brings that to you. But from a, from a landlord's point of view, you're evergreen. You know, you, you're never gonna turn down the opportunity for an agent to ring you, say, look, do you know what? I'm speaking to you first, because I've got an ideal buy-to-let property, we've just taken on a book. It's fantastic <laughs> content. And that goes back to, you know, from people have kind of anxiety about prospecting because, oh, I've got to like, do this close and I feel really... Just, just ring them and say, I'm ringing you first because this is, a f this is just right for you. And enough times out of ten, they'll say, look, I really appreciate the phone call. Thanks for thinking of me, mm -hmm. but, you know, I'm not in the market at the moment. But in six months' time, they'll ring you back and go, I'm ready now, though. Now, now Angela, let's move on seamlessly in a nice segue into marketing because business generation and marketing work hand in hand. Um, you, have, you write content about the South Shields property market. I mean, why do you do that? To be seen as the property expert in our area, and again, just to be different. Um, I think certainly in our town at the moment, because stock levels are low, all of the agents in town have just gone, reduce price, reduce price. Whereas for me, it's shown how valuable we are to the customer in pretty much everything that everybody said so far. We demonstrate that and we achieve the fees and the instructions off the back of that, but it is purely to be the expert in the town. But, but I mean, I've been on your website and you never talk, you, I mean, let's be honest, if I looked at most of your Facebook feeds, all it would have is listings. You know, isn't it amazing that all we want is sellers, yet all you're chucking out on your social media streams is stuff that's of interest to buyers? Weird, isn't it, Stephen? It is, it is weird. I just want to come back to something that was just said before about um, landlords. The easiest way to double your uh, managed property is to go to your existing landlords and get them to buy one more property. Okay. Okay. Easiest way to double it. They already know you, they already like you, they already trust you. Okay. If you can come up with a really good buy to let property, okay. that's great. Another one, can I ask, are there any landlords in the room? Thank you. Jamie, can I ask you how many um, properties you've got in your empire? Five. Five, okay. And I want you to assume you're not an agent now. Can I ask you, when was the last time your letting agent offered to take you for a coffee to maximise your investment? Yeah. Okay, would you be interested in maximising your investment? Yeah. Fantastic. There you go. So I've just created an opportunity there. I actually, I know Jamie, but I didn't know you had five properties. Okay, mm. so just by asking questions, I'm opening the door. Uh, really personal question now, Jamie. Do you have any friends? <laughs> Associates. <laughs> Are any of your friends landlords? Yeah. Okay, do you think any of your friends will be interested in maximising their investment? I don't know if anyone wouldn't say no to that question. Okay, so again, just by asking disruptive questions, you're opening doors. Okay. Look how much information I found out just by asking questions this morning. The problem, so, yeah, I mean, the issue is, is that most of our lettings departments are run with people whose personality types are very 
you know, detail orientated, they're not very sales orientated, and we don't actually task our property managers to actually ring our landlords and actually, you know, let's meet for a coffee, let's have a chat, let, let's, let's look at your portfolio, almost look at the portfolio. And I think we need to train them to do that. And I know I'm saying that as a trainer, but I think it's really easy. You could be doing it, picking maybe five questions in relation to a tenant fine landlord to find out if they'd consider management, uh, a previous sale that you've dealt with, a previous market appraisal. But if you as a team work out a set of questions that you feel are good, comfortable, open questions, and you start using them, they will build confidence as your team and they'll ask more questions. But you need to make sure that that information is then put in your database and you as the business owner needs to then monitor that that information is being gathered because then you can feed back and use it in your morning meetings because i sometimes think we do all our prospecting you know and talks about in silos i'm on the phone i'm ringing people i'm a bit disheartened whereas actually if we work as a team and we feed back in we're going to be much more able to then say well done and, we're make, and everything's a little step on the journey with the consumer. I used to think that I had to seal the deal then and there. I make a phone call, get the deal done. It's not that anymore, it's is a lot, it? It's, it's relationship-based. Relationship yeah. Stephen, first, and then I'd like to come and talk to you, Mike, about how your sales department can be the best tool for, to win on lettings. Okay. So I would change your language because, to be honest, prospecting is not very nice. But if you view it as that you're going to create opportunities, mm. so can you progress your customer a step further? Mm. Okay, so they may not be ready, but at least they're hearing from you. Mm -hmm. So, and let's face it, in the state agency, we're going to get loads of no's. Yeah. Okay. So if we don't like being rejected, we shouldn't be estate agents and letting agents because we're in, in the wrong business. So in a way, you do have to make rejection your best friend. You have to understand that. You but that's the problem with estate you, agents, you especially all these valuers, is that they're D-type on the personalities, mm. which means their biggest fear is rejection. Yeah, but you're not going, Chris. You're not going to win every single market appraisal. But, then they don't, but let's be honest. They, if you actually ask most valuers, they don't actually do business generation because they they don't like the word no. They fear the word no. Why are estate agents so bad at rejection? I think because we're salespeople and we're targeted and you're always looking about hitting a target. So if you don't hit your target or you've had a bad month, it's soul destroying. And, and I'm not sure that there's enough feedback um, about how you're able to do that. I know from personal experience, I worked in a sales job for Vibra many years ago. And I remember thinking, I need some new ideas, boss. I need some new ideas. How am I going to win more agents on our books? And my boss just said, keep doing what you're doing. And it wasn't enough for me. I needed help and guidance. And I think that's why it's really important that we give people the tools to do these things, because they might not be scared of it. They might just not know how to do it. Mike, you, you came up with something interesting about how your sales department can help your lettings department. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we run our branches in tandem in as much as we've got frontline sales and lettings. Um, automate the lettings, because... Do you check out this agent response tool? I know this is a bit of a <laughs> plug, but honestly, it is amazing. <laughs> so automate the lettings, but you've got to have a culture where, you know, from a target's point of view, the guys and girls in sales, their job is to grow the managed book. And it's really easy to do if they're not being dragged into lettings. And if 10% of all the people they speak to are landlords anyway, and you're ringing them up, having really friendly, easy conversations. Because isn't it interesting that we, we pay go. our staff on move-ins when in reality we should be paying them on... Tra you know, we pay... The people will... We pay them on the move-ins when in reality we should be paying them on the attracting landlords. Mm. And property it? management, because that's our residual income. I was never targeted on, on winning property management business. I was listings. Whereas surely that, you know, when we're in an uncertain market, we need that residual income. Guy, let's come back to marketing. Not only do you do property tour videos, what other videos do you do to try and attract people to you? Because I know you're beating them off with pooey sticks, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did, um, to give you an example, we did an A to Z of the best roads in our town. And we launched it on Boxing Day, and by New Year's Day, it had over 25,000 views. Wow. Yeah. And, and Mark Zuckerberg's a very clever man, because if people start liking it, commenting it, it grows and grows and grows. Okay. And, and so something like that, for us, was brilliant marketing, and just a very simple idea. Um, take this down, go to Google or YouTube, and type in the word, Top 30 Streets Watkin, and there is a 20-minute training video on how to do the top 30 most expensive streets in a countdown in your town. Trust me. Put that onto local Facebook groups and you will be beating them off with pooey sticks. <laughs> uh, honestly, Watkin, top 30 streets. Right, Angela. I was just going to say, remember the video we did about the duck that had the elastic band around its beak and one of our valuers was out on the road seeing the RSPB and just pulled up and did an instant live there and then. And we got absolutely tons of interest and interaction from just something so little but current 
as well. I think the magic thing is, with your business generation, is this, boys and girls out there in estate agency land, is you're sitting on so much data, and, but what are you actually doing? Why don't you employ a neg just to pick up the phone once a year and just work through the whole database? Because you're probably sitting on most homeowners' telephone numbers. Every day. Yeah. Okay. Five, yeah. Calls Every a day. day. Yeah. Okay. For one then hour. secondly, with regard to your social media content, stop talking about yourself and your firm and your services, because no one cares apart from you and your mum, and actually create content which is of interest to people in your town, which is, if you think about it, you are the gatekeepers to the second most interesting topic in the world to the Brits, the first being weather, the second being the property market, yet all you do is talk about yourselves. Stop talking about yourselves and start talking about stuff that people are interested in and people will be attracted to you. And that's either talking about the property market, top 30 streets. Advice as well, isn't Advice. it? Advice. You know, to do top when tips on how to get to you. Mm. And again, huge massive tip. Make sure you put the name of your town in every single first line of every social media platform and also to put it on your photograph. And again, your clicks will double through. Mm -hmm. Final thoughts. We've got 20 seconds. Quick tips down the road. Go, Stephen. Down the road. Quickly, one, look, one, hour, one hour every day on your customer base, call them. Angela, top tip. Get spriffed and a boom. Yep. And get all of your team involved in videos, not just yourself. Michael. Write this down. Set yourself a soft target of the 10K challenge on Facebook. There's six of us here in an office. We've got to get a reach of 60,000 people this month. All of our offices do it, and they do it easily. But most people don't even start. Good stuff. I think interest in your websites has never been higher. So make your website engaging and offer advice to buyers, tenants, landlords, vendors, and that will give you more content. I know. Don't try to do everything, outsource, ghostwritten articles as much as you can because you're all a busy agent. Thank you very much. Give them all a round of applause. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.